scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Many people don't have passion. The lifespan of their passion is a few weeks after marriage. The lifespan of their passion is when they say, I do. Some, the lifespan of their passion is when she gives them three children and four children. That was his goal, to have children. They've been pressuring you. Promise, you are getting old. No marriage. Marry. I need three children. Fine. That's the premise of the marriage. So you married an object that produces children. The moment she produces the children, the goal has been achieved. So there is nothing else. Do you know how many women, brothers and sisters, some of you parents, some of you sadly, you are the ones yourself in that kind of shoes. Do you know how many women move like strangers before their husband? And sometimes they almost wonder and say, you mean this man once asked me out? He once stood in the cold waiting for me to come. Look at how some of our fathers treat our mothers. It's a mess. And they have mentored us to do the same. If God does not intercept, believe me, you will reproduce the same result. Many daughters have done well, but thou excellest them all. There is an appetite for discontentment in the body of Christ. Brothers, let me encourage you. Please be careful. And, and, and sisters too. I've not come to brothers yet. I'm talking about sisters. But it's a quality for brothers. Passion. Whenever you see that you are attracted to a lady, it's not enough reason to go and ask them out. That's lack of self-control. Are we together? It is okay that I look at this lady and I'm attracted to her. It's okay. But self-control. That's what they say in the multitude of many counsel, there is safety. Some, the moment you see a lady and she's fine, day and then, even if it's during a prayer session, in the heat of prayer, say, please, can you see me after, after prayer? Discipline. Hallelujah. The next moment, that's your first time. You are even new in the prayer. They have not even confirmed you. You are not a member of the prayer department. You are just arriving that day. You say, sister, honestly, where, where do your parents stay? Let me tell you what you have just revealed about yourself. You are a very indisciplined brother. Because you come into a place with structure and authority. And you just come in and do anything you want to do. And sometimes the ladies are foolish enough to play along those kind of things. Discipline. Let people come and meet order in your life. Then they are forced to respect that order. Are we together now? Jesus is helping us today. Somebody, somebody is really getting blessed from what I'm saying. It's very important. Are we together now? Passion. If you are married here, you must pray consistently. Brothers, fathers, to keep having passion for your wife, not just your children. Because gone are the days when ladies will respect a man just when he's married. And you can see and say, ah, Jimmy is married, let's leave him. No, no. You can see somebody as old as my father and still come and meet me. Like, daddy, how are you? That daddy is, 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 just means I'm available. Gone are the days. You can see a man at my father's age, see a small girl and say, ah, my daughter, how are you? You, you would think he's fatherly my daughter. But it's, it's, it's not fatherly my daughter at all. It's another dimension on its own. 
so that you are married you know sometimes many men deceive themselves they just think the moment you are married it just means people will leave you alone just because you are married no our society it should be like that but our society has become so depraved that a ring is just a jewelry a ring is just a jewelry for entertainment are you hearing what i'm saying now it's something that symbolizes a covenant relationship it's, it's entertainment so when you wear a ring and say if they see a ring they'll mind themselves it's a joke it's a big joke where to it won't change anything thank you my dear love and passion love and passion and then the last key ladies I will dwell a bit here today never marry a man who is irresponsible that's the last point there must be a demonstration of responsibility 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 many brothers are irresponsible Christian brothers inclusive irresponsible tongue talking Christian brothers what does it mean to be responsible to be responsible means it means to be aware of the cost dimension of life taking cognizance of the cost dimension of life I don't mean money that anything to be done must be done by someone the Bible says every house is built by some man but God is the builder of all an irresponsible person says uh -uh, they have not done it a responsible person says can we do it are you seeing that now let me tell you something please look up there is a tragedy that has happened in Nigeria especially to Nigerian young men please listen if you can hear what I'm saying, it will save you. Many gentlemen around the world have been victims of this. And some of them seated here looking at me. I want you to listen very carefully. Do you know many young men have been over pampered? And that's why they are irresponsible today. Over pampering does not mean they came from a rich family. A poor family can still over pamper a man. Let me tell you how they over pampered them. A young man is 18 years. The moment he's washing his clothes... You say, ah, is there not house help? Wash for him. Because we have washing machine in our house. A young man who is supposed to start learning to be responsible. Are we together now? He goes out and by four o'clock you are ringing his phone. Return home. Return home. It looks like you are trying to be disciplinary. There is an age range where he needs to be home. But there is an age range where that guy is submissive. Maybe he's in church as a choir director. And you are now calling a mature boy of 19 years old. It's 5 o'clock. Where are you? Come home. So the guy is now 25 and he stays home. He married with his wife and stays home. Just like mommy said. Obedient child. Nobody goes out to get food again. Because he has been trained. Come home. In America from 12 years. 12 years old in America. You see children looking for something to do. Post office. Ah. There, there's no chair for us. They always expect to be recipients, not contributors. It's not your fault. That's why I'm helping you tonight. Many brothers are like that. They are born again. They love God. But anything that discomforts them a little, uh -uh, they don't want it. It's irresponsibility that produces laziness. Laziness. Get up and do something. You have a meeting for five o'clock. It's raining heavily. I say, Kai, oh, quarter to five, please. Uh, Benga, I can't make it for the meeting. Kai, I'm tired. This rain, the cold is too much. That's a lazy man who will not feed his family. You see that? He will not feed his family because he will say there's crisis in Nigeria. They can kill people if they go outside and he will leave his family members to die. The Bible says a lazy man will not sow because of the cold and he will also not reap. I am a fanatic of responsibility. Responsibility. You cannot be around me and not be a responsible person. Waiting for things to be done for you. No, sir. You must learn to be an initiator, not just a recipient. There are many men today, the salary comes from their wives. Correct? It's okay if there is a situation that happened in, in the course of the marriage and the woman has to be supporting. 
you see somebody from 1996 no job is the wife that works pays the children's school fees and the man is alive two hands two legs he gets up in the morning sits at the veranda of the house they are playing draft together with other colleagues irresponsible men who come they form a team and they just play where's your wife uh, you know she's a nurse she works in the hospital you know women she will come in the evening the woman will return there is no food she will come and be cooking and the, the male figure in that family is learning he doesn't like it but his ideology is being shaped after the example he's seeing there are too many irresponsible people there are irresponsible pastors who expect members to be the one to raise money for church have you seen people like that there are irresponsible pastors who expect members to be the ones to give them money am i not your pastor buy a car for me build a house for me marry for me that's an irresponsible man of god he's a man of god but an irresponsible one responsibility so you must look at it responsibility is not having a car that's not responsibility responsibility is not having a house that's not responsibility that's the indices many ladies are using and you are already getting into a big mistake responsibility is not having a car and a house please listen i can have a car and a house by the privilege of access it doesn't mean i'm responsible so stop using a car and a house to prove that a man is responsible eventually it's an index that will show responsibility but responsibility is from the heart the willingness to grow to press the willingness to fulfill the cost dimension of life don't say there are two brothers one has a car the other one is walking on his foot and so I, let me just go with what i'm seeing now the moment the car spoils that's the last car he will ever buy in his life because he never bought the first one in the first place many ladies don't know how to trust god for good brothers we pray in tongues but we don't know what to expect and so i'm painting a picture for you right now somebody already after koinonia you answer the guy you see how god has given you the answer the answer is no the answer is no immediately after koinonia you send him a text he said, please sorry i've delayed you but the answer is no because you are not god fearing you don't submit to any authority and you don't want to he may not know but is he willing to now that he knows are we together now yeah number three do you love me passionately no you passworded your phone, passworded your text, passworded your laptop, passworded a call is coming, you just run outside. You save the name of a lady, John. You save the name of the other lady, Andrew. Because you turn the head of people to be stupid. Andrew, why are you calling me? It's a coded language. You are not serious. Hallelujah. And finally, the man is not responsible. The average African family has a, has a family to take care of. A nuclear family first. I hope you are aware. Brothers, are you aware? <laughs> Be aware now that the average African family, there is every likelihood your wife is not the last born. What does that mean to you? You are a direct contributor. You are going to contribute. There are families that they gave birth late. Praise God. So, one sister is ready for marriage. The other one is still in primary school. You are going to take care of them. It's not supposed to be so, but it's a reality you are bargained for. That's what saying I love you means. That's what saying I want to marry you means. She tells you I'm the firstborn. Out of how many? Seven. You said you still love her. What you are trying to say is, look, it's all right. We can find a way around it. Brothers, let me say your own quickly. Brothers, I can beg you in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. It's better to have a broken relationship, honorable. In fact, don't break relationships, end them. It's better to have an ended relationship than to have a scattered and pieces marriage. One, you can even thank you. What do you look for in a, a lady? God fearing, too. You see that God fearing is the same for both male and female. God fearing, exact same definitions as with the man, nothing changing, gender irrespective. The same God fearing, God fearing, meaning you respect God. Many ladies don't respect God, many ladies don't respect God. 
they respect themselves they respect society they respect every other thing but God there are ladies who pride themselves in being bad girls even if they are in church they are happy when they look and say you're a bad girl they, they smile that we go do if you're a bad girl it's a very bad it's not a good comment you know many ladies feel guilty listen I'm saying this from the depth of my heart many sisters innocent church sisters they feel guilty listen they feel guilty for being innocent you know society makes it looks like your eye has not open you've not been sleeping around you've never drank in your life uh -uh. you don't have a boyfriend you are 20 years uh -uh. you mean this is this this is how your life is and they make ladies feel guilty for being innocent they look and say she's a small girl she's just growing old come to us we 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 have our legs and you say you are happy for being bad it's a different thing if it's your past jesus has helped you now or at least will help you this night are we together god fearing a woman who is not god fearing will have a husband and her sponsor that's how she will marry there is a husband and a sponsor what is the sponsor for rainy days what's the husband for every other thing so once the going gets tough she called do you know how many women married women still call those who were their ex husband or ex-boyfriend or ex uh, sugar son or ex whatever it is and call the person after many years a woman with five children still calls one small boy somewhere how are you reporting her husband to the small boy and the small boy said how will we do now he said can we meet in so 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 club at the back of that tree just the, the way we used to meet before you are married the the average lady still has affiliations with her past relationships even in her marital home i will say it oh my name is joshua selman the average lady still has affiliations i tell you this you know i'm not lying some of you as you are looking at me you know it's true although you may be married but you still call john and it's not just brotherly how are you is the family okay no john i need help you have to help me this is my husband you know he's a stupid man john as yes, it is always you you know we know ourselves say no problem john can you do the transfer now praise god that's why they are not faithful that's why they are not desperate to change their husbands when they come for prayer meetings like this and they say if your husband is not doing well pray they are not praying they know the prayer will be answered and they are not interested so they rather just other people pray and you see the woman just praying just looking around because whatever happens there is a well you don't say concubine for a man do you There's somebody somewhere an affiliate <laughs> who they are waiting for number two brothers what should you look at in a woman a woman who is submissive to the man at all times submissive to the man on the line at all times i don't have a problem with submission but when at all times convenient or not submission has never been a choice write it down that's your own part oh apostle you don't know how foolish my husband is don't worry i'm coming i've not finished for now just know your own role submit submission is a difficult thing listen ladies look at me let me tell you a big secret submission is a risk it's a risk you don't know the man too well no matter how long you have been going out submission is a risk when you marry you will discover many other things you never knew submission is by faith and it's a risk it's a risk you've not seen what the man can do when he has money you've not seen what the man can do when he doesn't have money you've not seen what the man can do when his job is under pressure you've not seen what he's done if he's promoted to become a ceo yet the bible says submit submission is a risk you need the holy spirit to do it that's why you have your own part to make sure that the authority you submit to has been vetted thoroughly by God. Hallelujah. 
you must submit to the man at all times. When ladies refuse to submit to their husbands and they say he's not man enough, that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible did not say submit to man enough men. Apostle is not, he's not providing anything. I'm the one bringing the money. I'm the one paying the school fees. I'm not stupid. I know. Be word compliant. You are, can only judge disobedience when your obedience is complete. There are many ladies who want the men. Listen, and sisters, please hear me. Most of us, this mindset came from our mothers and our, our parents generally. We must correct it. The idea that a man must prove he is capable, then I will now submit to him. Hey, you are a hypocrite. You are doing this exactly what his secretary is doing in the office. Who will not submit to a man who gives you food? If I buy you a plate of food, won't you greet me like this the next time? That's what you want your husband to do. There is a difference between your husband and other people. I know you don't like what I'm saying, but it's the Bible. Remember, we agreed that we are going to submit to God in all things. That's the Bible. Submission is hard. I never said it is easy. I never said it is easy. You will be a fool submitting. It's sad, but it's the truth. Because there are times it will not make sense. Your friends will look at you and say, you are stupid. Why are you doing this? Your husband does not deserve you. It's true. But the Bible says, that's why for those of you who are not married and those of you who are not in a relationship, you should thank God. All this rush, I want to enter a relationship. My blood is hot. You will thank God now for this message. Because the relationship you would have entered will be the beginning of disaster. No guidance. Submit to the man at all times. And it starts from the relationship. It's not when you get married. No, it starts from the relationship. I know submission is not foolishness, but the Bible instructs it. You see why mentorship is good? You see why I spoke about a spiritual authority? Because if you are playing your role well, and the man is not doing his thing, you have a right. That third party that has been authorized can come in and say, no, 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 no. Wife is doing her part well. And because the man submits to authority, he will listen. If his deliverance, they will cast the demon out. If he's counseling, they will manage his pressures at the moment. But where you are submitting to a man who does not submit to God, does not submit to authority, you are in trouble. Big trouble. What is number three? Let's hurry up. What kind of woman should you marry, brother? A woman who is sacrificial and hospitable. Third point. Sacrificial and hospitable. In the 21st century, you marry a woman who cannot sacrifice, you have married disaster. There are many ladies who like, who cannot inconvenience themselves for the growth of their homes. No. Hallelujah. The moment the man loses his job, the wife changes. She can't love him again. There are many people I counsel and it's, it's sad the way their wives treat them when things are not going well. Oh, he just bought a house. He just got promotion. My husband, my husband. They just blackmailed him. Oh. They said, ah, this and that happened and they demoted him. She won't refuse, but you see the body language. Honey, why now? You know I don't like plantain. Please don't disturb me. In this house, when you bring money, we cook well. Subliminal statement. You have started communicating. It's a terrible thing. Please hear what I'm saying. The Lord is speaking very seriously. Never submit to a man because he has money or because he does not have money. The Bible never does that. The Bible never instructs that. So choose whether you want to marry or not. Thank God marriage is not compulsory. But if you want to do it God's way, you must submit. There is no excuse for rebellion. It's a terrible thing when women gather together with their friends. Now, I know, I know, look, I understand that there are times that women sit down and talk to comfort themselves. But there are women who are perpetually in a habit, in a habit of sitting with groups. They travel to this state, there is a group. And they sit down and lambast their husbands. They talk all kinds of nonsense, reveal family secrets, bedroom secrets are, that are not for the consumption of the public. And when they finish, they come back and they expect all those women everywhere to respect the men. They will not. Your man, your man had a challenge and maybe he had an affair with a lady. He has apologized. A man of God came in. They managed the situation. 
is only you and the pastor who has managed the situation you now carried your mouth you have run it from east to west from uk to london everybody knows your husband once had a challenge and one day they look at him and the day he annoys the person who knows that secret the person will go and publish something in 1971 you see them do it in america when god is about to bless somebody somebody will just come crying on tv and say look i remember what you did to me these are that because we don't keep quiet the bible says that even a fool when he's silent is regarded wise the bible tells every woman to cover her head there is a dimension of physical covering but there is a dimension of spiritual covering cover your head the head over your life protect him protect him He's vulnerable. Protect him. Are you getting blessed? Sacrificial. Listen. No matter how rich you are. No matter how blessed you are. A time must come in your relationship and your marriage. When you will need sacrifice. Is that true? Sacrifice. There may be times. When God can give an instruction promise so that three bedroom flat that you have built and go to a rented apartment i don't teach irresponsibility but there are times god will give that instruction and for those times it will require sacrifice there are times because you want a good education of your child you will constrain certain things please we cannot go to london on vacation one day we will go but for now we cannot go let us use that money to train our children but there are many women they won't hear other women are going even those who are your genius in office but we we are here no unhealthy comparison hospitality i don't want to talk about that sadly there are ladies who are not hospitable at all you will buy bonds together with a friend you are just still with the friend you will eat the bonds eat the second one eat the third one squeeze the leather and try and say guy this bond self is not very sweet you will never give it even to say please take you give them once if they say no you refuse because you never meant to give it stingy attitudes and that kind of thing translates in the home visitors will come to your house and sit down for hours they are discussing critical issues with your husband there are even women men of god who come to their house and they won't do anything when the man is about going ah, ah when we are warming rice please i stayed in your house for two hours warming with rice even if you are cooking it it will be done by then <laughs> ladies listen 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 please don't laugh it's a serious thing it starts from your attitude in the hostel your pot is your own your corner is your own your everything is your own your shoe is your own your water is your own your bible is your own your best sheet is your own that's how everything will be your own even when you get married you will demarcate it husband this section of the house is for me this one is for you this one is for the children there are many people who cannot give they like taking but they cannot give me ever buy anything for a guy over my dead body he will keep buying for me oh. because to buy 200 naira the charge card he said what will i do he's already rich that's he's the one that asked me out i didn't ask him all that those stupid nigerian film type wise sayings that many people imbibe and keep using to destroy their lives no sir sacrifice say sacrifice you must learn to sacrifice many ladies feel ashamed being sacrificial they feel cheap being sacrificial we have been indoctrinated by a society that makes women feel cheap when they have to sacrifice so they come to a guy and honestly speaking all this guy has is a small room and all of this but god is helping him and no 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 that attitude of sacrifice is not there i want tomorrow now now i want tomorrow now They say we should do this, this, and that. I need 90,000 from you. And the brother says, Look, honestly, I don't have anything now. You know it. I mean, you can take my ATM. You won't hate him, but your body language. There are many relationships I've counseled. The moment the guy does not have money, he's in trouble. You will see the language of the lady. One month before he gave her 10,000, as if it's your father. You called your physical father. He said he won't give you anything. You now call somebody you are going out with and you want to swallow him only 2000 okay i'm grateful you are say you are grateful but your body language for that remaining one month kai is being shameless 
It's not good training. Hallelujah. You come into the life of a man, you did not contribute anything. Yet, just because he loves you, you want to sit down at the throne of his heart and control his ATM and control his destiny. The only person permitted to occupy that position is Jesus. Are we together? Yeah. There are many brothers suffering under the hands of ladies and women and wives in many respects who cannot be patient. You don't eat tomorrow today. Are you getting blessed? Brothers, the last thing is now the physical factor. Are you seeing that? It's now I even brought the physical factor. It must be in that order. That's when you can look at every other thing you want to look at. She beautiful, she all of these things. L listen, as I have known God more, truly let me tell you this, as I have known God more, and as I have received mentorship from men and women and elderly people who have worked in this life, I found out that all these physical things they are important, but sincerely, let me tell you the truth from the depth of my heart, they will fade like a leaf. They will fade and vanish like a leaf. I have counseled very beautiful women whose husbands pounded their faces like whatever and drove them out without praying about it. If the entire reason why you are attracted to a woman is physical, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. I was in Joss when I went to see my parents at, at the beginning of this year. I happened to go and visit um, one man. He used to be my principal. And that was the advice he gave me before he knelt down and, 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 and I'll pray for him. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you one truth. Be careful. I'm not saying physical things are not important. But when your concentration on physical beauty or attraction or looks or physique or shape or whatever it is supersedes the fear of God are we together now supersedes what's the second one submission to the man supersedes whatever you've heard me say it again you just come and meet a lady there are serious issues maybe in a family of 10 and all of them are non-christians you know what i mean and she's the only christian she's saying sorry oh this is the family you are going to you didn't settle down to pray you say no problem you are too fine for me to let you go you are in trouble my mother is a witch it's okay i love you like that I, me i'm telling you she's a traditional i know don't, don't worry there's koinonia there's miracle service And people get a lot of casualties. Sorry, man of uh, my brother, I need to tell you something. I was born with some kind of deficiency. Honestly, I'm physically not able to take in. I can't have a child. That's a little what is children. The most important thing is love for you. You now drive yourself and get married. After two years, you want to kill her. As if she didn't tell you. You see it. Please spiritualize spiritualize your process of getting a wife don't be carnal don't sit with brothers and say have you looked at this one what do you what can you say it depends on who you are talking to if you are talking if you are talking to a brother who is not born again you are in trouble he will give you the counsel of Ahitophel and after two years you will be surprised to see that beauty can fade say amen God fearing submissive at all times sacrificial hospitable let me talk about responsibility for a while and then maybe for a few minutes and then we'll pray write it down first timothy chapter 5 verse 8 please give us first timothy 5 verse 8 quickly brothers i want to talk to you now i want to talk to everybody but specifically to the men we need responsible men in our society First Timothy chapter 5 verse 8 is that possible? If that's not possible, I would look for it. Go ahead and read it. It's projected inside, outside. One to read. Uh-huh. Hold on. This is a big revelation. Stop there. The Bible says provide for his own. His own talks of relative and everybody connected. Then he says, but especially, meaning first and foremost, what's your first responsibility? The Bible never said love your neighbor as yourself. There are people 
who sit down and their wives are suffering and they are donating cars and buses to churches whereas they cannot pay their children's school fees it's an irresponsible life the bible says especially to those of his own house he said he had denied what the faith and is worse than an infidel write this down what is responsibility responsibility is a burden of obligation over someone or something responsibility is a burden of obligation over someone or something number two quickly responsibility is an awareness of consequences an awareness of consequences that if you do this there is a consequence if you do not do this there is a consequence responsibility is an awareness of consequence I identified a few reasons here where people are why people are generally not responsible let me talk about them for a few minutes number one the reason why many people are not responsible and why they may never succeed is their indecision over their success and establishment the reason why many brothers many sisters but brothers especially may never get established is indecision there is a difference between a wish and a decision i want to eat rice that's a wish i want to eat rice but i will get up and go to the restaurant and buy it or i will go to the market to cook it that's a decision backed up by the willingness to pay the price to actualize it there are many brothers wishing wishing through prayer wishing through reading books wishing through receiving prophecy wishing through dropping their prayer points in miracle service no wishing does not pro provide an answer indecision over being successful look at me god is speaking to people here i preached the first message i preached about responsibility in ministry was a message called come out of your father's house that message blessed people in no small way there are many of us who keep lying to ourselves that we are young i'm, I'm young you know i am 20 i am 30 even 40 you say you are young are we together you must learn to take responsibility over your your life if anything will be done you will have to contribute in making it happen indecision you've never made a decision to rise up and be serious you've made a decision to marry you've made a decision to have children you've made a decision to fantasize but you've not made a decision to be diligent diligent and say no I'm tired of the way my life is Lord Jesus things have to change look let me tell you something there are brothers listening to me right now and some following online this night should be your night of decision many years ago I got I made up my mind that I was going to be a very responsible person I it was a vow that I took with God are we together exactly 14 years ago in fact 15 years ago exactly 15 years ago I made that decision that I was going to be serious and be responsible the first book I bought was discovering your purpose by Dr. Mike Mudok Dr. Miles Munro and I sat down when I read that book I cried I remember writing it I still have the book till today it was a vow that I wrote I will be a responsible man of God I will be a, a responsible father I will be a responsible husband I will be a responsible leader decisions how do I know you have taken a decision to be successful when you stop making excuses excuses the language of irresponsible men I would have done it but it's not my fault you too you understand no sir stop making excuses Nigeria is in recession that's why no men who make men who are fond of making excuses are not responsible men and that includes women too of course number two admit your mistakes that's how I'll know you have decided to succeed admit your mistakes admit it 
oh I was careless in this area I admit number three stop blaming other people for your problems many young Nigerians like this we blame government we blame all kinds of things we blame demons we blame our father my father didn't train me well at my age look at it's now I'm entering 100 level it's not the best but now that you have entered take responsibility take responsibility there are too many people in anger blaming people they didn't pay my school fees the reason why I'm sleeping around for school fees is because I have a stupid father okay I agree I sympathize with you but now that you are in Christ is God speaking to us tonight His teaching is becoming hot Koinonia is quiet I pray that it's entering your spirit because that's the goal stop making excuses brother stop making excuses stop making excuses you are making the same excuse since you were 15 you are 31 now stop making excuses your father drove your mother when you were nine years now you are 20 you are 20 11 years ago get over it and move forward oh apostle i was raped when i was two years i'm sorry i feel very bad for you but the god of heaven has helped I, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I know it's very bad and it's disheartening, but get over it and move forward. In fact, we don't even have too much of that in Africa. It's down the west, you find irresponsible people. A 70 year old man will come out and say the reason why he was, he was poor was because the father emotionally abused him and they will send a counselor 70 years. He, he abused you. When, how old were you? I was five. For 65 years, you allowed your life to move like a car without a driver. And now you are blaming your father, going to stand in his graveyard. Dad, I know you're dead. But this and that and that. Trouble. Stories. All this drama and gimmicks. Oh no. Take responsibility. Stand and throw stones at a graveyard and go back 70 years. That's a wasted life. indecision have you made a decision that you will succeed brothers look at me have you made a decision that your children will not beg for school fees under your authority don't say amen have you made a decision have you made a decision that your wife will not be moving around and go and enter one bus and somebody will be pushing her pregnant nine months madam shift one small boy somewhere is pushing your wife have you made a decision to be responsible? Have you made a decision to train your children in the fear of the Lord? Have you made a decision to bring the banner of Jesus in your family? Have you made a decision that you are not going to sit one day and explain and tell your children stories and say that man on TV, we were classmates. Have you made a decision? Many of us have not. We have been wishing, but we have never made a decision. Tonight, make it in Koinonia. Are we together? Make that decision. Make that decision. When you make a decision to be successful, you will stop immediately. You stop being a small child. The concept of small child is not by age. The moment there is nothing that occupies your life to keep you focused. That's why people are free. 10 o'clock, you see them moving around. Drinking sugar cane on the road. Eating carrots on the road. Just moving around. And they say, ah, bros. I don't know. And say, you are free. Are you, are you free? Say, yes. Where are you going? Man, I got one movie. There's one new computer game. That's a man who has not made a decision to be successful. Because when you make that decision, your purpose is supposed to occupy you for a lifetime. You will be too busy. You have to even receive grace from God to think about marriage. Many people are not purpose driven. By nine o'clock you've slept you wake up by six because you are free you still sleep back wake up by 12 you wake up you are still free you still sleep back you spend from four to five making calls disturbing visionary people how are you it's been a while I say sorry i'm walking why are you treating me like this is it because i don't have money let's talk jerry and the person is saying i'm busy and you call it pride may you be too busy for your enemies to distract you may you be too busy for visionless people to come into your life and come gossiping talking nonsense 
there are many of us our idleness and our purposelessness has created the exact atmosphere for gossip and everything because you are not working you don't do anything people will leave their homes and come and crowd in your house your your house is the meeting place everybody talks about their marriage they talk about their children they talk about everything you are the recipient Are we together? Somebody wants to come and gossip. As he's coming close to your house, he sees that you are busy. There are so many things happening. Many brothers are too idle. They are too idle. Call them in the night, they are snoring. Call them in the morning, they are snoring. You're not going to make a great life that way. Look, I will tell you the truth because I love you. That's why many of our parents could not pay our school fees. Huh? Could not pay our school fees. There are fathers today. There are many people seated here. It's not your parents that are paying your school fees. And they are alive. And they are doing well. You come and meet them and say, Daddy, I need school fees. They say, are you stupid? What should I do? He said, I don't know what is happening in Nigeria. Automatically, what they are telling you is, are you not a lady? Go and do whatever you know to do to bring the fees. Do you know how I know many parents are irresponsible? Now, let me say this. And I say it with all honor to God for the privilege of being able to help people. Out of all the people I have paid their school fees and paid the school fees, less than 2%, less than 2% of their parents have cared to call to find out who is paying your school fees. There are people who have been paying their school fees for more than four years. There are people who have paid their school fees from secondary school till they graduated. And not once did their parents call to say, come on, who exactly is the man of God that is paying your school fees? Let's at least come and see him and say thank you. Are we together? Yeah. So I know what I'm saying. Very irresponsible people. There are people, some of you, as you are here now, although you are a student, you are still sending money home. Your father is alive. Your mother is alive. It's not that they are old. They cannot work. They will even call you. My daughter, nothing for us this month. And they never ask you how the money is coming. So you don't even... Do you know, I made a statement and um, it is scaring me. The things that women and even men do for money is becoming scary. As I counsel people, I'm being afraid. Honestly, I will tell you this. There are many people, I tell you, their parents are not responsible for their lives. A daughter in a family where they cannot even afford bottled water comes with a phone of 150,000. She's not earning. She's not working. You don't know who is in a relationship with her. No brother has come to show he's responsible. And the father says, uh-uh, you are enjoying, no? Just leave her own for us. You see that kind of man? Somebody comes to drop your daughter by 11.30 in the night. 11.30, you are the one as the father opens the gate for him. Say, ah, my God, look at this guy. Welcome. She enters with a new dressing that already shows hellfire. And yet, you, you please see, this thing I'm saying, I'm not being hard on people. I'm challenging something. If you love Jesus Christ and you love your future, you will love what I'm saying. You may not love me, but love what I'm saying. There's too much carelessness. To the extent that there are many parents who don't even know whether their daughters in, are in the home or not. Three days they've not come home. They don't know. If they see them, fine. If they don't see them, fine. It's a different thing. If they are adults, they can live their lives. You can say, this is my daughter, but I did not teach her this. She's taking her decision about life. But you see some of these young ladies that move around? Very small girls. They look at you. Even as a man of God, they don't respect you. Because people older than you are the ones dealing with them. You greet them, they want to treat you like that man who was with them yesterday. A stupid attitude. They see you, you even look at them and you see them doing some funny things. You are trying to correct them and tell them something is wrong. Everybody in their eyes is a boyfriend. They don't know the difference between leaders. They are seeing their parents greeting a man of God and they come out and they are behaving all kinds of things. They think he's another toaster. No respect, no dignity. Are we together? Yeah. 
this is the carelessness that is happening in society do you know to the point that if you bless a lady and give her five thousand she will keep be looking at you and smiling it's like she's waiting for the other side of the deal what other side are you hearing what i'm saying now because nobody helps for nothing we live in a society where nobody helps for nothing if i give you ten thousand naira you know what to do tomorrow see listen let me encourage you i don't condemn you but if there is any man in your life please listen to me listen to me who you are exchanging money for going to meet that man stop it this night in the name of jesus say amen, amen. say it amen. send them text messages whether he's a lecturer or a military officer in judge send him a text message after koinonia and say no weekend again sir he said why say a man of god i love so much has spoken oh i will double what i'm giving you that's not the issue are we together it's very important it's very disheartening please if you're a parent here and you are listening to me i'm not saying you sit down and probe your daughters ladies please don't get it personal but someone has got to talk to them it's, it's too it's too much it's too careless it's too much a daughter comes with a phone that even her father cannot buy Two hundred and fifty thousand naira phone a laptop whatever it is and nobody can ask a question nobody of course you cannot ask because you were never part of her life you never contributed in making it happen so is it today now you ask her where did the laptop come from it's a terrible thing see when you see me close to my ladies in koinonia here is for a reason many of them literally did not have that father figure in their life literally the moment they are hungry they know they must sleep with somebody so for them they are shocked having somebody that can bless your life genuinely okay parents we need we have work to do many of our parents have really failed us it's very important but then we must take responsibility please sisters you are going to vow in the name of the lord today it's better for them to drive you away from school than you should do you know how many people you catch hiv today do you think the man who gave you the hiv there are many people who move around you are seeing it looks like they are healthy the, 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 aside from the spirit in them spiritually speaking curses yokes spells on their head they land everything on your destiny. You are too small for that kind of that kind of thing. There are people who you see them young and small, but the things they have gone through, they can sell you and bring the change. They look at you as if they don't know anything. The Lord will help us. The Lord will seriously help us. Valentine is coming again. An opportunity for destroyers to emerge from tomorrow they are selling cakes now selling balloon selling letters selling all kinds of things they will come roaming around like wolves about to eat up the destinies of people they leave their wives and their children some of them their parents some of the people that some of these men are looking for the lady they are looking for is even the daughter of the man's friend is that true yeah there are ladies that pride themselves in dealing with certain classes of men. We don't do all these small, small boys. No. Us, our own, we deal with Abuja kind. 99 days for the thief. The, the owner is not your husband. The owner is Jesus. The day the owner will come and say, look, I'm fed up with your life. You'll be in trouble. Men will go and catch HIV and come and give their wives. Women will catch HIV and give their husbands and kill themselves. I paid a lady's school fees today by the grace of God and to the glory of God. And it was a disheartening situation. Her registration was closing today. In one of, I don't even know the person in the university today. Her father and her mother both died of HIV and left two of them, taking care of themselves. 
I asked the lady, how have you been paying your school fees? She said, I do tailoring. I laughed. I said, I'm not a small child. How have you been paying your school fees? Answer me. What is you do tailoring? How much is your school fees and how much do you sew clothes? And that's when she shocked me and said she has been paying it by doing whatever she does with her pastor. <laughs> nothing goes for nothing. This is Nigeria. You can't, you can't eat your cake and have it. I live to praise your name. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Proverbs 21 verse 20. I want to cast a spirit among men tonight. It's called the spirit of a waster. Write it down. The spirit of a waster. We must cast that spirit out of our brothers. The spirit of waste. Proverbs 21 verse 20. Wasted opportunities. Wasted relationships. i like us to read it. It's projected. One to read. An oil in the dwelling of the wise. Uh-huh. But a foolish man spended it up. Look at me. You know. When I talk to many brothers, the first thing they tell me is, Apostle, times are hard. There's no money. I want to do business. There is no money. It's a lie. Look at me. God has been faithful to many brothers. If you are a typer at one point or the other in your life, God has been faithful. But many people in the body of Christ are wasters. Wasters of resources. Wasters of opportunities. Living a lie. Living a false life. Your salary is 50,000. But you are staying in a house of 500,000. You are a waster. Are we together? Your salary is 100,000. You are driving a car of 5.5. You are a waster. I told people, don't buy a car until you have money up to 10% of the value of that car consistently for maintenance your maintenance cost is approximately 10 to 20 percent of the overall value of the car you buy on a consistent basis many people go and collect loan from the bank instead of them to buy a simple car they buy different kinds of cars move around to prove a point you are earning 20,000. You are buying a material of 50,000. And you wear it and everybody around you does not know. Let me show you how Satan cheats Africans. There are many of us, if you did not have the spirit of a waster, God has been faithful in your life. You would have raised up to a million naira right now to do responsible things. How about marriage? How we waste money in Africa? You get the best venue, hire the best people, you go and get a small boy and pay for that boy 30,000 naira to hold a ring. Can't you put it in your pocket? <laughs> of course, why are you laughing? Will he stop it from entering her hand? The spirit of a waster is destroying Nigerians. You are a student, you are wearing a suit of 50,000 and you pride yourself all around. I have this. No, sir. It's a waster. And we pastors have been victims of this because in an attempt to help people become successful we put pressure on them to prove that the world is working and in an attempt to show that the world is working the money that god gave the guy to help him he now uses it to buy a car as a hundred level student to show that he has faith faith is not foolishness you are in 200 level you are wearing a a a, a weapon of, of twenty thousand. no there are many students who are eating where certain lecturers are eating. Where a piece of meat, a big piece of meat is 500 naira. See that? And you eat three square meals a day. They give you 10,000 naira in a week you spent. Some of us have a spirit of spending. You can't rest till it finishes. It's a spirit. Waster. Are we together? You are wearing a shoe of this amount. Please, I'm talking to you. You have to square up. There are things in your life you can go and sell. That's your capital. Sell all those nonsense. 
You have three phones. Who are you calling? You are loading your phone with 10,000 naira in a month. That's somebody's salary. And you, all you are doing is gisting. Rooms that we give the devil to destroy our lives. Praise the Lord. You are not doing anything. Your baba comes to meet you. 1,000 naira per baby. Can't you go and kill? What are you rushing for? Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are people who don't have any money. You are not earning anything. You charter a car to wherever you want to go to. Let me show you how we waste money. 25,000 naira on a trip. Oh, I can't enter night bus. We have to fly. 30,000 naira. Economy is finished. Book business class. 45,000 naira. You are paying. You are flying away your destiny. Whereas with 5,000 naira, you can with honor. I'm not saying the days will not come for those things. But not now. Fake life. You see people living. Especially women of God. Fake life. So that I will show that I'm anointed. You go and buy a watch of 100,000. You are wearing it. No, let me tell you. When you rise, everything around you rises. So when you fake it, nothing around you can resonate with the level you claim to have been. You don't know anybody that warrants that level of influence. When Koinonia started here, with crowds of people packed to outside, I will come on a bike. A bike. Miracle service. People are waiting. The next thing you hear sound of a bike, I will drop from it honorably with my Bible. And at that time, I was already blessed. Please, stop any fake life. We know you are responsible and we know God will help you. Brothers, am I speaking to you? This pressure of trying to look like Joshua Selman, you will die, oh, you don't know the fire I've passed through to come where I am. No, no, sir. This pressure of trying to do this. Visitors, if I am coming to your house, if all you have is water, keep it there. Don't go and borrow money to cook Turkey, I didn't ask you. God is faithful. I'm not coming for food. There are families and women of God, may God forgive us honestly. Because when any time they visit any family, they must prepare honorarium. Thank God no leader is doing that here. The day I hear that any leader in this place is going to anybody's house and saying they should package honorarium. Oh no, 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 no. The God that sent me will judge that leader. Judge that leader that you go to anybody's house under the canopy of Koinonia and go and say they should give you. No, not every seed self is collectible. Some things are your birthright. You are collecting your honor and your dignity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is God helping us tonight? The spirit of waste. You start saving. You get 50,000 naira every day from your parents. That's a worker salary. Yet before half of the month, you are begging people who are on their own. Your makeup kit is 20,000. Who cares? If you have the money, that's all right. There are some of us now, you are planning marriage. You've not gone anywhere. You've spent 2.5. What are you doing with it? Wedding gown, 500,000. To wear once. Are you wearing it every day? suit hundred thousand there is a particular anko that this group where is it in the bible if you don't have money everybody should dress well just honor them will they deny that they are your parents must they dress in anko please hear what i'm saying oh if eat your size and grow gradually god will honor you honeymoon you want to travel out to where if you don't have the money explain to your wife Honeymoon is a mentality, not, a, not an act. Africans waste money. I was sharing with some people today. 12 years celebration of getting born again. 13 years of getting filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Two years of being delivered from smoking. And we organize a big ceremony. We fly people from everywhere. December, the entire savings of Nigerians for January to November finishes in three days three days of hilarious living you buy hamper 14,000 per one you buy almost 20 to share because you are looking for a good name in church no sir
there are brothers here you have no business buying a laptop you don't have the money there are sisters you have no business buying certain materials if all you have is one trouser my brother iron it with dignity the god of heaven who sees you will honor you you are not irresponsible if you meet the sister and she doesn't like you because of the trouser god just saved you from a bad wife go away and trust god for a lady who knows how to see in the spirit hallelujah don't put pressure on yourself you enter any relationship that is a high maintenance relationship killing you book for counseling book for counseling fast and say apostle i need help i entered it i am not saying you are bad people that's what counseling is for to be able to talk to you and say no 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 i think you are spending too much people get married and they don't have a house they get married, they spend 2.5 million and they cannot afford 150,000 for a house because of the life of a waster. May the Lord deliver us from the spirit of waste. What of ministries that waste? Uncommanded projects. Projects that are not commanded by God. Oh, this other man of God is doing it. Let's do it too. A church comes and they don't have money simply because they are seeing people pay school fees. They now start paying people school fees and the entire reserve of the ministry disappears. Oh, they are buying a pulpit. Oh, they are buying this. This is five million. We must also buy it. Uncommanded project. Anywhere God has not taken me to, I'm not under pressure. I will get there for sure. Whether you believe it or not, I will get there. There are levels Koinonia has reached now by the grace of God and there are levels we have not reached. I will never put myself under pressure to get into those levels. Brother, your hand does not reach to buy a car. Be patient. Just take it easy. The God of heaven will give you. When favor comes upon your life, it will be like rain. In 24 hours, God will change your life. But by the time you force the door, it will open, but it will kill you. We are going to pray. Has anyone learned something tonight? God wants us to rise to be great men and women. First in our family lives, but also in every other thing. Every lady here trusting God for a good man. May the God that I serve bring a good man to your life. And any brother trusting God for a good woman, may God bring a good person. But you cannot reap a seed you are not sowing. You cannot sow the seed of a stupid man and reap a virtuous woman. You cannot reap, sow a seed of a wicked woman and reap an award-winning man. God is not that unjust. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that he shall reap. So ladies, please listen to me. As I round up, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be careful with some of this carnality and materialism. Be careful. I've challenged the brothers to be serious, but you must be careful. There is nobody no tree no matter how well you water and fertilize it it will not become a giant oak tree in one day but there's potentials for it are you together now yeah there are people some of you admire if you saw them 10 20 years ago you will not like them but faith i saw one man of god when i saw his picture it was as if he was with rope he used to tie his waist you can use measuring tape and tie the waist his wedding with his wife, she just stood as if they carried that cap, as if they carried cap somewhere and just put on her head. And the guy, the guy should be a multi-millionaire, if not a billionaire today. He lavishes upon his wife like there's no tomorrow. That's the price of taking the risk with the man. If you are risk averse, you sit down there. Is God helping us? And brothers, be responsible. Don't take for granted that I've told ladies to be responsible to be responsible and you sit down you are stingy you are greedy you are in a relationship valentine is coming you are pretending like you don't know plan you must do something on tuesday plan plan you have today saturday sunday monday tuesday morning plan so that you don't take for granted and say because some of those things are laziness please we must balance it brothers you must be serious Sisters, you must be serious. Make up your mind. 
that you are going to make a good decision. Dissociate from any dangerous and poisonous relationship. Brother, you are in a relationship that is, is killing you, is eating you up, spiritually and financially. I may not advise you to break, but I advise you to cry for help. Cry for help. Don't die in silence. Sister, you are in a relationship with a brother who is oppressing you and making nonsense out of your life because I said you should be virtuous. Cry for help. And if it's not changing, leave him. Leave him. It is scriptural to leave a relationship that does not represent where you are going. Are we together? We are going to pray. We will continue tomorrow during the workers retreat. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray but I want, please no moving around. No moving around. I want everyone to stand just just stand still for a moment and I want you to think about your life in one minute especially for the brothers I want you to meditate upon your life in one minute what will your 10 years be from now what will your 20 years be at the rate you are going with your life at the rate of your mindset at the rate at which your understanding is what kind of results are you producing sister Look at your life now and be sincere between you and the God of heaven. The seeds you are sowing now, what kind of harvest do you see in front of you? Now, I want you to lift your voice before the God of heaven. In the next two or three minutes, cry. He says, my help comes from the Lord. Cry, 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 cry. Please, I want you to cry to God. I've said many things tonight and you know where it affects you. I want you to cry before God in one minute. Lord, I have seen a mindset. I've seen a mindset that is destructive. I need you to help me. I'm a godly brother, but I've seen that I've been irresponsible. I have been lazy. Lazy about my relationship. Lazy about my life. I've been giving flimsy excuses. I take responsibility tonight. Are you praying? lady and have allowed a wrong mindset a materialistic mindset a mindset that is carnal to consume me I ask you for help lift your voice and pray if every other thing I said tonight touched you anywhere please lift your voice and cry to the God of God for help responsible as a father pray you are connecting with us online pray I will be responsible as a husband to my wife to my children I take responsibility tonight Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Father, take away every spirit of indiscipline, laziness, and wastage, and irresponsibility. Let it live my life forever. Lift your voice and pray. Laziness. Mental laziness. Entitlement mentality. Waiting for father to do this for me. Waiting for mother to do this for me. Flimsy excuses. Are you praying? Please pray. This is your destiny. Pray. This is your destiny. Pray. This is your destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, break any relationship in my life. Love relationship, wrong associations that are contributing to my downfall in life. Let them be scattered now. I don't care how long. Any wrong friend, 
wrong associate wrong whatever it is I was not a thief until I joined certain people and they made me to be a thief now. I was not a bad girl until I joined certain cabals. Break free from those relationships. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points. Prayer point number three. Father, give me direction. First, over marriage and over every area of my life. I, I confess that I'm confused. Give me direction. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and cry out. Lord, I need direction. Concerning the issue of marriage. I need direction. If you are married, pray. Lord, concerning my family. Right now, I don't even know what to do. Things are not working in my family. You've got to help me, oh God. Direction. On what to do as a father. Financial direction. On what stream of income to put your hands on. Don't just do anything because everybody is doing anything direction on how to go as a pastor direction on my marriage direction on a life partner direction hallelujah let me add one more prayer point before the last one you are going to say Lord walk in me and walk on me Anything that makes me not to be the ideal wife. Anything. Don't pray for husband yet. Lord, whatever makes me a bad wife. Whatever makes me a bad husband. Whatever makes ladies run away from me. Whatever makes men run away from me. I humble myself tonight. And I ask that you take it from me. Walk on me. Walk on me. Lift your voice and pray. What is driving my husband away from me? What is driving my wife away from me? Is there something I'm doing wrong? What is driving my destiny helper away from me? What is driving the anointing away from me? What is driving favor away from me? What is driving breakthrough? Pray from your heart. There must be something I'm doing wrong. Why does my husband not love me? I may be getting it wrong somewhere. Why does my wife not love me? I must be getting it wrong somewhere. Why is our relationship up today and down tomorrow? Something must be wrong. I take responsibility. No passing blames. Hallelujah. Last prayer point and we're done for this night. Listen carefully. We're going to pray this prayer point before I make the altar call. There is a dimension I didn't have time to talk about. Maybe tomorrow if God grants us time during the workers retreat, I will explain. It's called the suffering help of God. Listen, listen. Ah, yeah. Brothers and sisters, God can help a man. I am a testimony of a man that God has helped. The Bible says, and Uzziah was marvelously helped of the Lord. A young man, to, for a young man to be established in Nigeria is hard. I, I admit it, it's hard. There are no jobs. Every society gets its employment from the private sector. And if the private sector is not robust in any economy, there is no job. I know the probability of an average young man 
to be established before 30 in Nigeria now, I tell you the line is very slim. If it's to follow everything justly, by God, when will you write jam and finish? Strikes in school before you finish. And all the trouble that comes with sentiments and tradition. You need help. Brothers, it's neither by strength nor by power. When I found out that my strength was too small to give me the result, I played my role and ran to God. I, I want to give you the next two minutes. I don't know how you will pray this prayer, but you are going to say, Lord, if you don't help me, I will move forward home. I, I am tired. Please cry, 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 cry. God can help men. Oh, he has been our Ebenezer as a ministry. We are a testimony of men that God has helped. My life today is a testimony of how, a, of how God can help a man. Cry for his help. Cry for his help. Don't pretend you don't need it. Don't pretend you don't need it. In his help there is favor. In his help there is protection. In his help there is honor. In his help there is restoration. In his help there is speed. There is advancement. Help me, oh God. Help me over the issue of marriage. Help me over the issue of business. Help me over the issue of my children. Help me over the issue of my family. Help me over the issue of my character. Help me over the issue of everything, my career. I admit that I need your help. For he is our ever-present help. Ever-present help. Ever-present help. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. If you forget anything I've shared tonight, don't forget that God can help me. You will be foolish to imagine he cannot help. My God, the God I serve, look at my life. That God cannot help a ministry. Look around and bring one koinonia poster that you've seen on the road. That God cannot help a people. Look at the financial records of the millions of naira spent by this ministry. Debt free completely. Not owing any man as a ministry dead or alive. Listen, brothers and sisters, God can help a man. I tell you, he can deliver you. He can protect you. Some of us have been trying on our strength. We are going to pray that prayer one more time. And say, Lord, I give up my strength. I lay down my pride. Please help me. Help me to be established. I'm getting older and older. And at the rate of the way things are going. My job cannot establish me. My salary cannot establish me. My business cannot establish me. I need help from heaven. Hallelujah. Keep standing everyone, inside, outside, and all the people following us online. Whatever nation you are in, it doesn't matter, distance is no barrier. Please listen. I want to make a very serious altar call now, two in one. First and foremost, those who are saying, man of God, I've been waiting for this call because I'm about to run to Jesus right now. I don't like the way my life is going. I need Jesus. You don't need counseling for some people. You need Jesus. There's no level of counseling that will, re that will replace lack of the life of God. Don't sit down. This is not an initiation to be a Christian. This is a serious affair with your destiny. Are we together now? The second group of people are those that are saying, Lord, I'm coming before you to truly repent. I'm asking you to help me. I'm asking you to help me with all my heart. You may not be sleeping around. You may not be drinking. You may not be smoking. But you know your life is as scattered as whatever. And you know that you have not been walking in the ways of God. You are saying, Lord, my pride is what has brought me to this trouble. I need your help fast. 
these two categories of people please if you are outside start running just before we come i'm going to count one to five it's not by force there is nothing tonight that is by force but i tell you you need jesus you need jesus jesus is the answer start coming for the world today run like there's fire on the mountain there's no Are you coming or you are still thinking about it? Win the war tonight. This is over your destiny. If you are still coming, I want you to run from any of the overflows. Join them. Those following us online, there is still hope for you. Listen, let me tell you the truth. I don't care what has happened in your life. The Lord Jesus will give you a new beginning. It doesn't matter. But you will only give those who can receive. He said, as many as received him, you can reject him. Hallelujah. Those of you in front, lift your right hand to heaven. You are not reciting a poem. This is not a memory verse. This is not a recitation. This is a simple guide to help you make a powerful decision. Say after me from the depth of your heart. And if you didn't come out here and you are part of them, those online, say it where you are. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you to help me tonight. I have come before you sincerely asking you to intervene in my life I receive your life into my spirit and I declare that from today my sins are forgiven I have the life of God I move forward ever and backward never the power of Satan the power of sin and the flesh is broken over my life in the name of Jesus Keep your hands lifted. Lord Jesus, there is no man who can be perfect by himself outside of you. You are our righteousness, our holiness, and our perfection. I pray for these ones who have come. In the name of Jesus, I declare your sins forgiven by the blood of Jesus. And I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that a new life starts for you today. The grace to be responsible and to rise like an edifice is released upon you. In the name of Jesus, may your path be like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. In the name of Jesus Christ, every guilt, every condemnation over your life, I declare that it leaves your life now and forever. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. God bless you for this great decision. Please follow, who is there? Follow someone waving his or her hands, okay? Okay, lady, she's waving her hands, all of you this way. Just follow them. Please provide your details as required. And the Lord will help you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.